wouldn't normally think to use a telephoto lens in this situation, especially one that has a 135 millimeter field of view in full frame terms, which for the record, I've never actually shot before. The longest I've ever used is a 85 millimeter. But I've spent most of the last few months shooting pretty much exclusively wide angles. So I just wanted to do something different, uh, experiment again and just challenge myself. Since I was trying this lens out for the first time, I thought I'd spend some time reviewing some of the photos from the photo walk since you know, whenever you try something out, it's difficult and uh, things don't, things usually don't work out very well. But this image of a boy and the scary mannequin heads in particular is probably my favorite from this entire photo walk. I like horror movies, um, so these mannequin heads immediately caught my attention. And though it took me a while to figure out how to compose because with a 135 millimeter field of view, you have so little room to work with. And I was hoping the boy would step close to the heads or react or interact with them in some way. I was focused on the heads, so even though the boy's not in focus, there's still enough detail that you can see that he's kind of grimacing. And whether or not that's a reaction to the mannequins or not, I think it works here. Having the scary heads and the young boy grimacing as he kind of looks like he's pulling away, you know, it's, I don't know, I just, I like it. Otherwise, it's a clean photo without much distraction. Though it might have been better if I had gotten more of this second head in the frame. Um, yeah, I'd probably give it like a six, maybe a seven. I'll go with a 6.5 out of 10, I guess. <laughs> it could be better. Um, but overall, it fits with my goal of capturing details in the environment and how people interact or exist in it. So yeah, I, I really like this image. This is a photo I was initially happy with. I like the red and look for it wherever it can. You know, I just really like that color. So this matching pair of the lantern and the sign was nice and you know, that's what drew my attention to the scene. And uh, you know, I waited around for someone to show up who looked interesting because there were multiple people walking through that and most of them just didn't really catch my attention, so when this figure whose face is partially obscured in shadows, you know, finally starts walking towards me almost, you know, almost kind of ominously, you know, I thought that was cool. Even still, it's just not, it's just not a particularly interesting moment. I could also be a lot cleaner. Those people in the background, you know, behind the guy, they kind of clutter the image more than I'd like. Uh, and it's, it's a little distracting. So this image could be a lot better. <laughs> I'd give it, I don't know, maybe a four or five out of 10. It's probably a four, it's, it's nothing special. This is another image that I initially thought I liked. Uh, I was fortunate with the timing of that giant screen in the background that kept changing. Um, it gave me this splash of red, um, which was nice, I liked that. The issue I have with it now is that the officer standing there is, isn't particularly interesting. He's just looking down, looking kind of bored, which is <laughs> which is how I feel now looking at this photo. You know, it's it's pretty, but also a bit boring. There's just not enough interesting things going on here other than that splash of color in the background. So I'd probably also give it a four out of 10. Uh, maybe I can use it as a thumbnail at least. <laughs> you know what's funny is now that I'm looking back at my photos, I, <laughs> I took a lot of shots of uh, police officers, uh, which makes sense. There was a heavy presence that day since it was the beginning of the Oshogatsu or New Year's week. Uh, New Year's holiday for people in Japan, which if you didn't know is the biggest holiday of the year. Normally the crowds aren't this packed and congested in Ueno, um, so it makes sense that they had a bit of a police force out to help control the flow of pedestrian traffic. Most of the images I took of them were boring. This one here is okay, I guess. The officer speaking through the megaphone is what caught my attention. Um, and I like that there's, you know, the second detail in the background of a person kind of pointing in her direction. So there's, you know, there's two points of interest, but, but otherwise there's just not much going on here. It's like a three out of 10. This photo here is like a two out of 10. <laughs> it sucks. Uh, I shot it because I often notice patterns like this. Uh, I guess my hope is that someone who's maybe wearing clothing that has a matching pattern enters the frame. 
I like photos with matching patterns or matching colors. This is, you know, they can be pretty fun and just really pretty to look at, but this one didn't really work. Uh, the reason I bring it up is because while the result is trash, uh, it's not pointless taking photos like this. I think uh, it's always worth taking photos of things that catch your attention, even if it ultimately never sees the light of day. You know, reason being, you're building your pattern recognition and just ability to notice things so that when, you know, when the once in a lifetime moment does happen before your eyes, you're ready to capture it. And that's what makes all this practice and effort worth it. And that's just kind of the reality with street photography. It's mostly failure. Though to be clear, I don't consider my photo walks to ever be failures. I always enjoy exploring and taking photos or just seeing things for the first time. That's always fun. But as for the photos, those seldom turn out how I hope. You just kind of have to accept that. As for the lens itself, it was a fun experience. I normally keep a brisk pace when I'm out on a photo walk, um, just because I don't tend to linger for very long to work a scene. But when you have such a long lens, you have to spend more time thinking about where you're standing in relation to your subject, because it is such a tight field of view, and it's hard to include lots of detail, especially if your goal is to include more than one point of interest. I had to look a lot further than I normally do, because otherwise it's just impossible to capture enough detail. But, you know, as an alternative from time to time, it's kind of nice, because the more methodical and slower paced workflow is honestly kind of relaxing, so. I think I'll enjoy doing this, you know, as an alternative to shooting wide every now and then. And while I'm not yet convinced that this is a lens I'm gonna wanna take as my only lens, when paired with something wider, I think it's a great addition to my kit. Uh, I can already imagine that I'm gonna love using it for maybe shooting at festivals in Japan. A lot of times the crowds just don't allow me to get close enough to where I wanna go, or they've cordoned off parts of the road to make way for portable shrines or something. This lens is also the heaviest lens I've used for Fujifilm cameras at, I think, about 540 grams, which is not light, but it's actually not that bad. I got used to shooting with a 2470 2.8 back when I was shooting Nikon, um, and that thing weighed like 800, maybe 900 grams, and that thing was a monster, so. You know, having gotten used to doing street photography with that lens, this 90 millimeter really doesn't feel that bad to me. At the end of the day, is it a situational lens for street photography? Absolutely, but it's fun and uh, it will be incredibly handy in some situations. And I think it's good for your growth as a photographer to keep challenging yourself, trying new things and experimenting with different tools. While 135 will probably never be my favorite, you always learn new things when you're trying things out. And this lens made me think more about how I position myself and just to look further ahead than I normally do. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Otherwise, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.